Thoughts? Well, I think it is really impossible to say that the situation is getting better or worse. It really is very complex. On the one level, I think the recent changes, the protests, the revolutions have opened up spaces for women. So you see much more women being involved you know, on street protests. And, but at the same time, I think we can also witness a backlash against uh, women's rights. And I think it's also really important to distinguish one country from the other. So I think in Tunisia, things are going very differently from, let's say, Egypt, where we can really see now a backlash against women's rights, where you know the control of women's bodies, women's sexuality, man's sexuality, is very much part of the regime's attempt to assert its authority. Well, I mean, I think that uh, part of the problem in the past is that the West has tried to do something in a very double standard way. So, for instance, I mean, in the Iraqi context, for example, uh, I think it's impossible the idea to liberate women through a military invasion. What happens is that you actually create a backlash and a much more conservative shift because people react to this Western invasion. Um, so I think the sort of singling out of women's rights as a way to democratize, to civilize the East is not a useful way forward, I think. Um, but what should be done, I think, is a, a much more uh, transparent and systematic approach to hold all governments accountable to human rights. I mean. We not you know, at, at one moment when we think that they are on our side, we turn a blind eye if a government is actually involved in atrocities. I think we have to be much more uh, even-handed in condemning human rights abuses and also, I think, uh, supporting organizations on the ground who are actually trying to uh, challenge authoritarianism. And I think right now, actually, what we see in the Middle East is really important that the struggle for women's rights struggle also for more justice on the basis of gender equality is very much part of the struggle against authoritarianism. Um, I think that you know authoritarianism as we see it now um, you know after we thought oh you know after the revolutions things will be democracy but we actually see across the region this men you know whether they're military or Islam is trying to assert themselves and I think what for me is a really a sign of optimism and hope is you find lots of young men actually saying, wait a minute, I'm challenging the military or I'm challenging the Islamists and as part of this challenge I have to work side by side with women to also struggle for increased rights for women. Before, I think, before 2011, many young men made a sort of distinction so they would be involved in the struggle for democracy and human rights but they would not really think that the struggle for women's rights would be part. So this is really a big shift and that for me is actually within all these sad things happening is actually a cause of hope. Very importantly I think as academics we are challenged to not just speak to the 10 experts in the field, but I think we, we are challenged to make our research accessible to a wider public and to insert nuance and complexity in the often rather simplified and crude debates that we find at the level of policymakers, politicians, or the media. And I think, you know, whether it's with respect to politics within the Middle East or whether it's with respect to uh, politics of immigration and Islamophobia within Europe, it's really important that academics speak out try to find channels, whether it's through the media, through blogs, to reach a wider audience, speak in a way that people can understand them, but try to challenge some of these, frankly, rather simplistic uh, black and white narratives of the world, which just do not hold. When I last spoke in Venice, it was a year after the revolutions that had swept the Arab world, and I, like many analysts at the time, had really been caught up in the enthusiasm of the moment. It looked as though after decades of an Arab world living under autocratic rule, people power was now forcing a change in the political system and that a new form of government would take place that would be accountable to citizens. And what we've learned in the years since is that far from the people being able to establish a new power, they created a power vacuum. And the forces filling that vacuum have been the forces of violence. Instead of 2011 ushering in a new age of citizens' rights, it's really ushered in a period of challenges to the central authority, the collapse of the governments of the Middle East, and their place being taken by utopian movements trying to establish an Islamic caliphate, or civil wars, 
that show no sign of ending. And in that, I think that the Middle East in 2015 is a more violent and more dangerous place than ever it was in 2011. In my opinion, the imperative for Europe is to address its own problems at home. And that thinking in terms of the attacks in Paris on the magazine Charlie Hebdo and the tensions that have been emerging, it is very clear that every country of Europe with a sizable Muslim minority community has to manage the relations between this minority community and society at large in a way which reduces tensions. And I fear that with the rise of right-wing parties, with the fear of immigration, and now with the revived fear of terrorism, that Europe is at a crossroads. It can either go the route of trying to isolate its Muslim community, or it can go the route of trying to better integrate it. And I, I hope that the Europe that we will see in coming years will respond to these challenges by a greater degree of integration and assimilation to reduce the tensions in Europe. Only then can they begin to address the tensions that are tearing apart the Middle East. So at Kafoskari we have a long and well-established tradition in, uh, in the study of, of languages and cultures as a way to understand uh, the social and, and political evolutions and developments in different areas uh, worldwide. Uh, this is part of our heritage. Uh, it's uh, since uh, its foundation, we've been pursuing this uh, interdisciplinary uh, and this interplay between uh, uh, culture, uh, languages, and economics to understand and to spin trade in that case. And we're now taking uh, the lead on uh, on uh, on extending this uh, initial scope to political and social events. Uh, it's part of, as part of this uh, path, we have established a school in international relationships, uh, which is pursuing exactly these uh, these trends and this and these lines of research and and education. So today's conference uh, on um, on Middle Eastern and North African uh, uh, studies and uh, the consequences of the Arab uprising falls uh, along along this path, and and uh, and it's uh, it's proof of. Uh, of the excellence and the quality of the work we've done uh, in the past years, and it's a step uh, which, on top of which we'll build in, in the coming years to pursue uh, area studies further in, in research and education.